Hey, welcome back to this mini lecture. My name is Dino. It is on PowerPoint and cognition. The specific focus of this video is how PowerPoint, how it impacts cognition. So just sort of the central idea of this deals with cognitive impact. So not only PowerPoint specifically, but software generally in the internet, uh, even more broadly, it has a uh, cognitive impact. According uh, to uh, Lawrence Lessig, cyberspace and software architecture has its own thought process, process that imposes itself on users. So when you use a piece of software, you use the internet, say for example, if you have a desktop, you're going to double click on icons or you'll use uh, a menu at the very top and do file open to open a file. Like there's a certain way that the software works that makes you do it, like in, in, uh, use it in certain ways. And that po thought process imposes itself on you. As a result, if you think about that, again, like say if you have a, a piece of software, there's not that many ways to start it. And you can't just sort of like, you know, say today, um, there's not like besides double clicking an icon or or going into your finder or going into a, like a start menu there's not a more than a couple of ways to start a piece of software you can't just sort of make it open you know like uh, magically so because of that it leaves a cognitive input imprint on people and the users and now I'm going to talk maybe the more specifically about the cognitive style of PowerPoint more specifically what is a cognitive style of the PowerPoint what does it do to you when you use it. For example, PowerPoint is sequential. So everyone knows PowerPoint. It's uh, it's the Microsoft. It's it's their probably one of their key their key pieces of software. PowerPoint again is sequential. When you look at it and you look at a slide, they progress one after the other. So basically when you're looking down, when you're looking at a PowerPoint deck, you go upwards, you go downwards through the slide deck. There's no other way to go go around it. So again, it's it's sequential. That's just the way it works. PowerPoint is also hierarchical. Most slides, a really high amount of them, include bulleted lists in vertical order. So you see, like here, I only have the one, but it's like you know, it says hierarchical with a bulleted point. And the example I'm going to show you is from the Columbia Space Shuttle. It was a slide about a problem they had with it years ago. So this PowerPoint slide, you see the square bullets. There's one, two, three, four, five square bullets and four rounded uh, bullets that are nested within that. The problem with that is that the hierarchy, you kind of go from the top to the bottom in terms of the hierarchy. Unfortunately, when the space shuttle, this was when they are dealing with some of the issues around, uh, um, like there was a problem with the space shuttle, they're trying to figure out what it was. And if you see the specific slide, it's not to the very bottom square slide, uh, bullet points right on the slide, that the most important thing is, and it's basically this. And it's the very bottom, again, square, the, ye the yellowish square. Flight condition is, is significantly outside of test database. So they did some testing, and it's like, hey, this is what we're saying. And you probably shouldn't say at the very bottom, maybe the most important point, that if you're if you're trying to find out um, how something happening during flight could impact the flight as a whole, and that that flight condition is outside of the test database, that means your test database isn't particularly useful. And as a result, when the clash happened, people. There was a, a look at like a review of what happened, and this is one of the points that they said is this specific slide. So the hierarchy, the way that PowerPoint, for example, is hierarchical, it can cause problems. PowerPoint is also fragmented. It breaks fluid narratives into slides, and there's one idea per slide. For example, previously there was a PowerPoint about it being hierarchical, um, and it's like you normally have one major point like this this major point about this slide is that it's powerpoint is fragmented so when you have one major po uh, idea per slide that's just the way it is like you're not going to have i mean you could have multiple points ideas per slide but most of the time when you do it it's usually just one po point uh, one idea per slide and again you can have a really fluid narrative but you're just going to break it up into slides 
again, this is from uh, Tufty um, PowerPoint. It tracks visual filler. Uh, this 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 fellow on the right is a Microsoft uh, Clippy, the Microsoft clip art, which you may like or more likely hate. So as a result, because it's a visual medium PowerPoint, you're gonna put you want to make it visually interesting. So you add things like Clippy, Wee, and look at kids and and adults are happy to see it. Uh, PowerPoint also feels commercial. Corporate logos, anyone? You see here, oftentimes when you see, um, especially in a in a in a professional setting, like not like academic, more like what these videos are, or ideally they're somewhat academic, anyways. Um, you will see them. Um, the PowerPoint decks will have some kind of corporate logo, and so in the in the back of your mind, you're gonna go, oh, "This isn't just like an you know, informational session. It's it's a it's a it's a business session." So it has that kind of it, uh, vibe to it. Also, unfortunately, PowerPoint is a somewhat low resolution. You can only have few numbers per slide, and, and the charts are somewhat simplistic. This is in comparison to this classic table, this table of casualties, where you see it's a table, and it says the years. Uh, on the upper left, it says the year, uh, the years of our Lord, uh, and it has 1647 on the first the column, 1648, and it kind of goes left to right. And on the bottom is the types of uh, of the ways that people became casualties. This has a ton. You may, this might be hard to read, but if you're looking up for really something really specific, you can find really precise information in a, in, a, in a way. Unfortunately, on PowerPoint, for the, for the simplistic charts that you normally have, which are are, are like matrices that are quite small, with like you know maybe maybe a, a couple of uh, points per axis. That's the best it can do. This, it's not very good at it. Like if I said, hey, let's find 1652 and um, um, oh, what happened to uh, um, um, people dying from like some kind of infant-related uh, illness or fever, it would be really hard to find. Finally, from all this, like I think they maybe the, the 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 last point for this is persistence. You might go, well, the, a lot of these things seem, you know somewhat negative like if a, if, if, a, if a narrative that's really compelling is breaking up into fragments if you have hierarchies where uh, really important points are hidden what's the point why do we still have a uh, PowerPoint what's its persistence and I would argue it's the mass adoption you know anyone on a Windows or a, or a Macintosh uh, computer or you know uh, most likely lead in Linux I don't know if there's an, um, a version for it I'm sure there is it is used by so many corporations, so many uh, professors at the college level, at the university level, so many high school, and even K to eight teachers. It is used so broadly. Like I've heard, I've heard things about uh, parents asking kids to persuade them about, like you know, you want more allowance. If you want to, well, if you want me to get the more allowance, you've got to do a PowerPoint slide. So the kids make a PowerPoint slide to to to, uh, to persuade the parents, as opposed to back when I was a kid, we would just nag our parents. It is PowerPoint is so massively adopted that it just keeps going on. So many times, you go into any, you know, boardroom, you go into any classroom. Again, at the university and college level, definitely most high schools, definitely, and even a lot of K to eight spaces, you're going to have a board like a smart board or some kind of like projection screen, and then you're going to have some kind of projector going into it. Even the infrastructure for our ed educational and business settings have it's 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 completely adapted around this this type of visual uh, software. So it's 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 persisting. It's it's uh, it's going to be hard to resist. And also, again, uh, from this, you're going to have people that are you know students at any level, or if you're a business person wanting to invest, you're going to want to you don't want to hear just some person talking. But that's just not the way it goes these days. You're going to want some kind of PowerPoint presentation with some visuals. That was PowerPoint and Cognition. My name is Tino. Thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to like this video if you like it. Um, please feel free to leave comments. Um, why do you think PowerPoint persists? Is it because of the mass adoption? Is it something else? Is it at low cost? Is it it's because of its effectiveness? Um, what do you think about its fundamental characteristics, about its, its, its uh, fragmentation, its hierarchical nature, um, its many other, its, its attraction of visual filler, its somewhat commercial field, its inability to convey uh, uh, charts and numbers very well that are complex? Um, 
please feel free to comment on any of those points. And then finally, if you like this type of if you like this type of video, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.